All right, all right, all right. On the road again. Gee, I can't get away on the road again. Yes, that's right. I'm on the road to the Daytona 500. But you know what? I'm still dedicated to allow me to be frank, and I'm here at a uh, Marriott Bonvoy uh, in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. It's a good thing that I'm in Virginia because, of course, the sports book is in here. So I'll be making sure I got my uh, all my Daytona bets done before we hit the road tomorrow. Stopped a couple places to raw dog today. That's good, Frank. You sound like a little raspy in the voice. Ah, uh, I had a cold. Ah. And uh, I'm coming off, off the cold. I had the cold. If you could watch the, uh, the dozen live last week, I was coughing. Yeah, yeah, he was uh he was definitely starting to get a cold when we recorded last week when he was in LA. He sounded very raspy. So he sounded and, a little uh, better from last week. The cold week. is basically gone, but my voice just hasn't got back to full strength yet. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's I mean it sound, doesn't sound bad, but uh, it's it's definitely uh something I can detect here. So give us a little bit about your travels. So talk about the travels. Well, I spent a couple of days in L.A., did a dozen tournament. MVP, of course. If you didn't watch it, watch it. Uh, Did a whole bunch of raw dogging out there. Coast to coast flight, came back, watched the Super Bowl at home. And now I'm back on the road heading down. Doug's got my, I got the wheel because I can't drive on highways. I don't know why I I freeze on highways. I, I just can't. Go over. I don't feel comfortable driving over uh, forty miles per hour. I really don't. Is it so, more of the like changing lanes deal? Like, is the lanes? Yeah, that speed? doesn't help. That doesn't help. Mm, yeah, they got that. And then everyone that. honks. Yeah, they honk at you. They don't know that you're a worldwide celebrity. If they did, they'd probably be respectful. So Doug's has got the wheel. I provide the car. Doing uh, recording it on the uh, with the uh, GoPro. And uh, went through Delaware. Uh, we drove down to Del Marva Peninsula. That's where I went to school, Frank. Did you know that? Where'd you go? Salisbury. Do they have steaks there? They do, but uh, Purdue Chicken, the headquarters of Purdue Chicken. I a, saw, we thing. saw a chicken truck go by. Yeah, there's a ton of those down there. Well, uh, I think those chickens are probably not having a good day like the Nets tonight. I mean, the Nets didn't even fucking show up tonight. Well, Frank, uh, we got some pretty big Nets news with the NBA trade trade deadline. Your arch nemesis, James Harden, is finally gone. And Ben. And Simmons I'm going to set that jersey on fire. In fact, I brought it down with me. Hold on a second. Oh, well, I think he's going to do it at Daytona, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. What, yeah, I'm going to try jersey? to do it down yeah. here, Daytona. Oh, I thought you were going to do it in your hotel room. No, oh, no. I, <laughs> I want to find a place that's safe to do it. We don't want Frank getting kicked out of the Marriott for starting fires yeah. with the James Harden jersey. Yeah. You know, this is the perfect thing to go wiping a toilet with. You know, I wanted to buy an NBA jersey. And, and I knew I should have got Durant, but I was buying a Nico Heischer jersey, a Dan Marino jersey. So I figured 13, 13, 13, this motherfucking fucker. Dude, you should do an episode of Tanks Cook. Maybe a little bit of like, I don't know, like hamburger helper. Take a mean dump and then just wipe your ass with Harden. I I mean, has there ever been a bigger piece of shit in the NBA? He's pretty. I mean, what did you think about his uh, outfit? He wore that sweet coat. You look great, right? Yeah, fuck him. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. Frank has been very much on a war path against James Nets, Harden. But... Nets took the lead. There you go. Tides are turning. They is were ben down by Simmons, 30 points. Is Ben Simmons playing yet, Frank? No, he can't play. He got to ramp him up slowly. He's got, he hasn't played in – he hasn't even practiced in 241 days. So they're going to ramp him up slowly. And I genuinely – oh. That might have been nailed in the coffin. Seth Curry. Seth Curry's been great. Or if the Nets could actually hold on to this lead, which they probably should. 109-103 with 6.8 seconds left. 
Nick fans who were chanting, go back to Jersey, that looked like they're crying. If the Nets win, you might have to move into that uh, hotel room and just stay there forever. I was like watching it while I was watching the game, the first half while doing a hot dog review in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, at a place called Perfectly Frank. <sighs> Did you make any jokes about your name being Frank in there by any chance? No, but I signed a wall. It's a college place. It's like uh, it's a, it's like right on ODU. Uh, oh wow! What do you think? About? I, the, the, the Knicks the Knicks were shooting like 80% at one point in this game. What the fuck happened to the Knicks? Holy shit, the Nets. Uh, here it is. The Nets have outscored the Knicks 36 to 16 in the fourth quarter. Holy shit. I mean, the Knicks, you, that's pretty much an evergreen statement of what you can say about that. I didn't even year. realize what was going on until I saw like Twitter reactions and seeing Nets fans doing Brooklyn and Nets fan, Nick fans going, well, the Knicks whole lead, and it was the Jonathan Frakeson going, nope, never, nada. Well, the Knicks just blew a huge lead against the Thunder the other night, too. I mean, there's a total disaster, and um, six point, Tom yeah, Thibodeau is probably— 6.8 seconds left. Nets uh, just hit a three-pointer with—and uh, uh, basically, the Nets just have to not fuck up. They're up six with 6.8 seconds left. No, it's over. That's it. It's done. You can rest easy. They got no, to come. The Knicks just made it. The Knicks just made it three, though. Oh, oh boy. There you go. We got Nets, Nets play by play. Nick, Frank, uh, Nick and Reed. Frank's been very much into the Nets more so oh, than I've God. ever seen him in the last like three years of doing this show. He has not been this into them uh, even last year when they were actually like good. Well, look at the Devils. Come on, can you get into that fucking team right now? So the Definitely. Nets now have a uh, Nets 109, Knicks 106, 3.7 left. No timeouts Net. for either team. And Nets have the ball, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's over. It's Nothing's over. over until it's over. Does that place have a continental breakfast? I don't know. You're going to find out in a few hours, I guess. What's your what's yep. your go to at a continental? If you get a continental breakfast at a hotel, it depends what they have. Uh, they had uh, breakfasts at the uh, at the Nav Hotel last week, uh, and I got this like Danish. They had like a cherry in the middle of it, like an apple cherry thing. You know what that looks like? It looks like a bear paw with a cherry. Oh yeah, yeah. I was a big Danish guy back in the back in the day. I used to like knock out two of those before school started. You gonna um, stock up for the for the road tomorrow, Frank? Uh, what's what's the plan tomorrow morning? Well, we're gonna hit another uh, place to go raw dogging. I hear that there's a uh, place called uh, Pedro's Hot Tamale at this like roadside attraction called uh, South to the Border. That's a hot dog place, or it's yeah. a Mexican restaurant? You no, know, it's a it's a kitschy Mexican themed place. Probably uh, going to be canceled soon, but it's just uh, across the uh, border from uh, South Carolina. So how far so, away is it from where you're staying? About four hours. Four hours. Across North Carolina. We're, uh, I'm in Southern Virginia right now. And where's Doug's? He has his own room. He has his own room. Just down the hall. Have you guys ever, have you ever guys ever like bunked together? Or like, no. had a, had a, nah. Oh God, what are we doing here? What happened? Give, 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 give us what's going on, Frank. Tell, tell the listeners. I don't know. He doesn't know. Everyone out there, he doesn't know. It's just another, it's a review, and they, the next ball! <laughs> They're saying that it was a, uh, a uh, the uh, Nick guy tag, tagged up the, uh, tied up the net guy, and the net guy trying to get his arms out got called for a a Slager nine, and the Knicks get 18 free throws and a wall. Well, the update I just got says barring a miracle. Literally, the last six seconds has taken 10 minutes to play. Frank, is it more so just like you're clinging, this is your last hope of any of your teams winning a championship? You really think that uh, with the baseball lockout that the Mets aren't going to play this year? And yep. So it's just, it's the Nets, or you'll probably never see a championship again. 
the Devils are just totally fucked. Eh? And Lindy Ruff is going to be the coach for fucking ever. They had a three to one lead yesterday, and they uh, gave up five goals in like uh, ten minutes. Half of the, it, it was just just utter collapse. While this uh, review, I don't know what's happening. Yes, I had the TV muted. The uh, the review was just to put another another second on the clock. Frank, have you gotten any more complaints at uh, Devils games for being too rowdy? No, but they finally gave me my Dougie Hamilton snow globe. There you go. Big win. How, wait, wait, how did that come about? That, that's a pretty big development because you've been talking about how you don't get that. So how'd that happen? Because I guess they finally uh, heard me. They said that they offered a shirt, a size extra large shirt, which I can't fit. I like what the Mets do. They give you choices. Okay, uh, La- LaMarcus Aldridge is at the line, <laughs> and he hadn't made the first one. So they're up four. Spike Lee looks like he's pissed. His eyes are rolling. Well, oh, Frank, I don't think he's happy. They've lost like three. That's three crushing losses in a row. And uh, Aldridge made the second. So it's 111-106. Oh, it's over. That's what I said. I was like, I'm getting what, updates. What I'm not watching watching the game. Game. Now it's over. What, what, what the hell? Now it's now over. It's, over. Up, it's, that, like, they, it's, it's impossible for them to win. Yeah, no, they were up. They were literally up six with nine seconds left. And yeah, the uh, yeah, the so score like, the score early second quarter was like uh, the net. The Knicks were up like twenty eight. Well, speaking of over, football is over, Frank, and we, we kind of jumped straight into the basketball initially out the gate because the Nets were playing. But now that your Nets have won the game, what are your thoughts on the Super Bowl? The parade was today. I just saw a clip of a woman falling into the abyss. I don't know if you guys saw that. I saw it. I didn't. I haven't listened to it yet. I just only saw it while I was coming on. So break it down for us. Tell us, what do you you think about the big game? Well, good for the good for the Rams. Uh, they didn't cover, so fuck them. You know, that's never good. They didn't cover for me. Mm-hmm. I, uh, never win these parlays. I never win a bet. But I did get the under, and the overs club got screwed. You know, I was thinking about maybe next year starting the unders club and coming out with unders club underwear. You should you submit love- some designs. Yeah, I got it done. Yeah, and you love betting the under, Frank. I do. Life's too long and painful to bet the over. The reason why the under hit is because Odell got hurt. I mean, once Odell went out of the game, they stopped. I think if Odell doesn't go down, I think the Bengals, the Rams crushed the Bengals. Yeah, probably because Cooper Cup was getting all the attention after Odell got hurt. And then finally, in the end, they just started force feeding him and uh, the refs helped out a little bit. The refs did help yeah, out big but, time. Yeah, but I'm but... still pissed off. Aaron Donald should have been MVP. I would have won two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, he Aaron Donald showed up when it mattered the most. He he was big in the end of that game, even though he didn't do you know, much before that. You know, if it wasn't for Jalen Ramsey getting burnt twice, the Bengals probably wouldn't have even scored. Well, the T. Higgins face mask on the seventy-five yard touchdown was absurd that they didn't call that. So it should have been actually an even bigger uh, deficit. The Rams should have probably won by at least, you know, two scores if they had not, you know, if the refs didn't miss that one. I don't understand why the refs swallowed the whistle all game, but in the the final two minutes, okay. <laughs> Every play, yeah. That, that's the issue I had, too, with the game, is that they let them play the whole game fine. The face mask was horrible missing that. But then in the What's end, yeah, they just heard three big ones. You know what that music is? It's hot dog music. And America's first yeah. and original hot dog company is Feltman's. Yes, Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. And Feltman's is a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And he did it in honor of their late brother, Jimmy who was killed in the 9-11 attacks. Is that on my end? 
You sound fine, Frank. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. All right. Uh, okay. Um, with a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months in combat, Feltman is now one of the fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% beef or natural. Hot dogs are available to purchase online at Feltman.us and at Whole Foods. Not to mention they ship super fast and will be the perfect addition to your family's next cookout. So remember to use promo code Frank and you'll get 10% off all Feltman's products, including the bratwurst and the bacon, bringing home the bacon we are. That's promo code Frank for 10% off all items at Feltman's.us. And allow me to be frank, is presented to you by Feltman's. Incredible segue into that ad read. Yeah, I, I, I heard music. I guess it was some pop-up ad that just popped up on my computer. I mean, it's just meant to be. I mean, absolutely meant to be. Incredible segue. What do we got next, Pat? How much is the segue? Oh, God. Is this one of your jokes? Yes. What's the answer? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. How much does a segue? What's the segue. I feel like you're setting us up for something. Nope. That's the joke. That's the joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pat, what do we got up next? Well, speaking of weight, uh, 50 Cent in the halftime show. Oh, boy. Yeah. Because of inflation, he's now a dollar twenty-five. <laughs> he, uh, uh, yeah, that ran that ran parade. That was kind of sad. I, I mean, mean they, they just don't give they just don't give a fuck about football in LA. What was with it's, that video, though? I mean, it was there was not really many people around, but then there was other videos and pictures I saw where it was like packed. I mean, it could just be camera tricks, you know, good angle, making it look like it's packed, but it's really not. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like there might have been maybe there was a section or something or maybe it was the beginning of it where not many people had arrived yet. I don't know. I, I feel like there wasn't going to be an opportunity for people to, you know, miss it being like, hey, nobody's showing up because the Rams don't have fans. I mean, I feel like we hear that all the time. Um, you know what it is? They have their fan base, but. Ram fans, they, they, they had to rebuild their fan base after they left uh, in 1994. Secondly, football is never going to be that big in L.A. They shouldn't have two teams. They just need one team. San Diego, the Chargers should have stayed in San Diego. Let them focus on building the Rams market. Because Los Angeles has a lot to do there. And uh, fans who go to games want to be seen in the crowd. And they don't do many crowd shots. In football, I would agree not like you do in the NBA, not like you do in yeah. baseball. But uh, so, because we always have that. Because if Cincy won, it would have been insane. I mean, oh yeah, I still couldn't even believe that the Bengals were in the Super Bowl. It just, it, it was like a Jets level of like incompetence with that franchise, where you were like, they're just never going to make the Super Bowl. They are. The, the Brown family makes the Wilpons look like Steve Cohen. They are notoriously cheap. Yeah. Boomer Sison said that they would use towels for the, lock, for the locker room. And so basically the towel, like, fell apart like a dandelion store. Yeah, basically the towels that he was using in 1996 were the same towels that were being used in 1969. Want to know what's sad? You you just mentioned the Jets compared to the Bengals. The Bengals have been to three Super Bowls since the Jets went to one last in 1969. And they've been to the playoffs, I believe, three or four times since the Jets last made it in 2010. You know, uh, the first Super Bowl I actually remember watching was Super Bowl 16. Bengals and Niners with yep. Kenny Anderson and Collinsworth. Yep. yep. Did you know uh, Chris Collinsworth had, like, the rookie receiving record in the Super Bowl that year? It was, like, 107 yards, and uh, they asked Jamar Chase, and he was like, him? Like, pointed to him. He's like, basically like he was the janitor, like, so shocked. Yeah, but uh, does Chris Collinsworth mention that uh, he caught a ball, was streaking down the middle, 
and got stripped and fumbled in the red zone? Of course not. No, they did not mention that on the NBC, NBC uh, pregame show. The Bengals had two turnovers in the first half in the red zone, and then they uh, turned the ball over on downs at the goal line in that Super Bowl. Yikes. And that like basically ignited the, uh, the Niners dynasty. Yep. And one of those, one of those fumbles in the red zone was uh, basically Chris Collins got his pocket pick. Yeah, you, you know he doesn't like to talk about that, Frank. Um, I, I wanted to ask you guys, too, uh, what did you feel or how did you feel about the commercials this year in the Super Bowl? They suck. They're terrible. I mean, they were, they, were, they were forced. They were erring on the side of just, like, being, like, safe <laughs> and, and appeasing. No one really was trying to be edgy at all. Obviously, the Sopranos one stood out. You know, he touched like on the nostalgia. The two commercials, my yeah. two favorite commercials were the Sopranos one and the Larry David FTX one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just everything's getting soft. You know, like everything is, there's no one, no brands are taking chances. You know, everyone. You know what is, I would have liked to see with a commercial where the horse is limping and they talked, and it's another one of those Budweiser, Clydesdale commercials. The spirit of the Clydesdale. I would like one day for it to be. There's nothing we can do, Doctor. Elmer's. The glue oh. factory. The glue factory. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of horse lovers, Frank. I don't think that. I think they. It, you'd piss them off if they did a Super Bowl commercial about that. Yeah, I don't know how many of our fan base are horse lovers, but if you are, let us know. And we will rebuke Frank. On the <laughs> Frank, did you ever ride a horse as like a kid or anything? Nope, never. Not a horse. Nope. Not a horse guy. Not. not you I lived in a- Newark. Where, where are we going to find a fucking horse in Newark? There's got to be a fucking horse running around. They never had a horse and buggy or anything on the street. Nope. You never went to one of those like you know pumpkin patches where they throw you on the on the like fucking little donkey. And My father you- went. No- we went nowhere ever. My father to get to surgically remove him every night from the fucking te- couch. Where was with had did you ever go on vacation as a kid? No. Not one vacation. There was one vacation that was for Abe's christening off to New Hampshire. When you went of to your course. first isn't that when you went to the Red Sox game? That was your yes. first uh yes. your first baseball game. Yes. No vacations ever. So when was the first time that you like traveled with Barstow? Like considerable travel then. Well, I visited my parents and my grandparents out in uh, 1992. I went to uh, Colorado. That was my first time on a flight. And how was that? It was all right. You were fine on the flight. You don't like you know no anxiety, no nervous and a little anxiety, but it was all right. Wasn't anything. What was it like to fly back then? I guess you and Nick could answer that question, but how much easier was it to fly back then? I mean, you just kind of went on. Like, there was no, like... Yeah, there was no, uh, there was no rectal exam. Yeah, it was like getting (laughs) into, it was like getting on your, into your car, you know? No cavity search. Nope. And, you know, when you get a cavity search, it's good uh, to be smooth. And, uh, Support for Allow Me To Be Frank is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Champions of the world! Manscaped offers precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched a fourth-generation trimmer. Yes, that's right. The Lawnmower 4.0. You know that right? 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you. 20% 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the promo code TANK at manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed, optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code TANK. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Frank, that was a good point that you had. You definitely want to be uh, trimmed up 
before you get your cavity search at the airport to travel anywhere now. You um, know what sucks is, uh, of course, I have some extra poundage. I always trigger the pat-down search. What do you mean, like, you trigger it? You know, you, you go through the machine where you have to go like this? Yeah, yeah. And then they, uh, like, pat you down. They, like, rub your legs. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, like, an alarm was triggered by the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the cellulitis. Or the ah, cellulite. Uh, you might be getting uh, harassed, Frank. At the airport, it sounds like if you're, they're giving you extra pat downs, extra rubs. What do they, they get doing? Like smuggling, like fucking bobbleheads or some shit. Like, what, 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 what are you gonna do? And uh, well, you know, United, I have to like fly economy. I have to fly like uh, first class or premier because uh, I had to buy two seats in coach just for that airline. Well, I don't know about any other airlines, but that's the one I usually fly. Got it. Got it. You know, uh, and their seats get smaller and smaller. So pretty soon, you, uh, pretty soon you have to be a, a, a vegan waif to have sit you, in the seats comfortably. Have you flown with uh, Doug's? No. That would be a sweet flight, I think. I think if we, if I ever fly with Doug's, we have to bring Spider along as the uh, cameraman to sit in the middle seat. That oh that would be God. pretty good, guy. Tra- traveling with the units and Spider. Yeah, and having Doug just in that middle seat. <laughs> that might just be the ultimate content. I mean, the units certainly bring it. Let's Where do you want? Oh, we're bringing it right now. We're on our way down to Daytona. And, uh, I'm going to try to stop it. Uh, we stopped at two road dog places today, one place in Delaware, one place at Old Dominion. Uh, Delmarva Peninsula, as I mentioned. And now we're going to continue on down. There we any, go. Uh, any other food stops that you're looking forward to or maybe that you stopped at beyond the raw dogging destinations? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, I know tomorrow, like I said, I'm going to stop at south of the border. I hear it's a, it used to be a tourist trap. Now it's kind of like dying, kind of like the American Dream Mall. By the way, uh, the American Dream Mall has eight hundred and seven dollars left in its bank account. Is that the um, the one in Minnesota, or are you talking about the one? What's the, the one, one in the Meadowlands? The one uh, in the Meadowlands. Yeah, Xanadu. Formerly known as Xanadu. This, you know, the ski slope caught on fire. Who actually like has got like? You wouldn't even know that that mall's been open. It's a ghost town in there. Half the stores are still not filled. Uh, I brought There's a, a drone there, but I haven't used a drone yet. I brought a uh, camera there, and I brought a couple of shoes there. But other than that, and, I, and I've been there like a bunch of times. So what were, what I've been you, there more than most places. What were you going to use the drone for? Eventually, I'm going to use it for hot dog reviews. Uh, what are you going to do? You're going to fly over the... Fucking like what? What are you? What are you gonna do? Outside. You're just gonna yeah. fly well, over well, outside uh, and get some aerial. The guy visuals. who films for me has a drone, so when he's not available, I like to have a drone. I say. I say, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, it, it's a barstool person that films for you. Is it intern? Some of them? No, some or guy named Justin Dolan who works for YouTube. Oh, that's cool. Shout out, Justin. Thank you for yeah. coming, Frank, and delivering, our, delivering all the content. Yeah, he's part of the Tanks Army. Uh, Justin and uh, and Curtis Ward. Yeah, Curtis Ward. Yep. He's in from yep. edits. Shout out, Curtis Ward. Frank's um, henchman. Yep. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Frank, I didn't even see this. You fell asleep on the yak? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's Frank, cool. I, saw, I saw a video of you asleep on the yak, or at least maybe a picture. It Could wasn't have been a yak. shift. Could have been a shift. It wasn't the yak. It was actually the rundown. And uh, I heard everything that was being said. I was just, just waiting for the ad. I was just waiting for the ad read to be done. But were but, you on? The, but you were on the rundown. Yes. And you had your eyes closed. I was listening to the uh, the ad. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you knew the average was going down, so you just took a little cat cat nap. I Besides which, I was stuffed up. Oh, why? You wait when you were sick? It was when you had the cold. Oh, you you, you were battling through. Um, yeah. Speaking of he's being stuffed with the stuffed in the old nose ski, some little nose candy action. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Matt, Matt, Matt Harvey. <clears throat> Let's talk Matt Harvey, Frank. What oh, is God. going on here? The rumors were true. All How along. many times did he has he had all those nosebleeds? Remember? Yeah, he had all those yeah. nosebleeds. Everyone's like, "What's going on with this guy? It can't be." Everyone's like, "Oh, it's one guy's like, oh, it's probably drugs or something like that." And I think what was it, Francesca? That clip came out today. Francesca was like chewing this guy's asshole out about suggesting that it could be that because he bought like fifty pairs of shoes, and then all this time later, it's like, yeah, look at this. Well- there was also an incident, uh, I believe the night before Cinco de Mayo or one of the nights Harvey was out on the town, uh, that he was caught on tape of doing a key bump or doing a bump off his thumb at a table at a restaurant somewhere in New York. And nothing else ever came about it from there. They couldn't drug test him. They couldn't the, Mets, the Mets always have their, their, uh, their head buried in the sand when things like this happen. I mean... Harvey straight up admitted yesterday in court he got granted immunity. Um, he was taking perks. He was giving perks to Tyler Skaggs. Eric Kay was giving them perks and oxycodone. Um, Harvey admitted doing coke and perks and said he did oxycodone once in 2019 with Skaggs but didn't like it. And Skaggs did a lot of oxycodone and obviously had fentanyl and OD'd a couple of years ago. And that's why we're hearing about all this now on trial of how many pitchers were. I bet you there's a bigger drug problem in baseball. Is uh, once again, you know, evil see, no evil speak, no evil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's with this there are, this higher, there's, there's no chance that there's yeah. not not. A there's problem. no there's no chance that Matt Harvey's the only one. No. Yeah, it wasn't just the Angels. The Angels had a drug ring in 2019, but there's pitchers and other players around the league taking painkillers and and other pills and that stuff's addictive. So yeah, I'm sure even when you look at the NFL, Brett Favre had a painkiller addiction at one point in his career too. Like that, that shit's definitely real. We you know, how like is, how is the NFL able to handle their drug issues? And major league baseball just is like Fred Flintstone falling on his ass. Well, I think the difference here was that, uh, Eric Kay, the communications director, former communications director of the angels was literally a drug dealer. Well, the uh, Pittsburgh Parrot was a drug dealer, too. The mascot? Yeah. He was giving drugs to the players? You never heard that story? No, I have. No. Please tell it. 1985, uh, of Pittsburgh Drug Trials, which is uh, a number of baseball players were caught in a drug sting. And it turns out that Pittsburgh was the hot spot to get drugs in uh, baseball. And then the players were traded amongst each other. And that the major supplier was the Pittsburgh, uh, the guy that was in the Pittsburgh Pirate costume. <laughs> that was Keith Hernandez's supplier. Keith what? Hernandez testified about it. That's like the ultimate scandal. Oh, my God. Imagine if that happened now, if it were like Mr. Met. Or they or uh, they were going to suspend all the players, including Keith Hernandez. But then they uh, worked out a deal where they would have to give 10% of their salary, do community service, and uh, be tested weekly. Oh, I remember that, yeah, the settlement. Yeah, and, uh, well, the major shocking thing that came out at the whole trial was that the drug mule was actually the Pittsburgh Parrot. That's unbelievable. Yeah. What a ground, what a crazy story. But speaking of uh, MLB, well, before we get to that, actually, what do you think about Terry Collins kind of blasting Matt Harvey about having suicidal thoughts and drug issues and everything else? You know, the fact that he's talking about it and didn't do shit about it tells you basically everything that's been wrong with the Mets the last 35 years. I mean, it's one thing, like, apparently they tried to you know, either they turn the other way or they try to get him some help, which is, you know, I've heard a little bit of both, but kind of to have your manager share something like that, that was, you know, what they, the- what they, what they needed to do was call up Dallas Strawberry. 
so the Mets called up Doc Gooden, I believe, in 2016 or 2017 and, and got him to talk to Harvey. But obviously it didn't. Uh, That's the wrong really person to talk to Harvey. Dwight Gooden has, is still fighting these demons. Well, yeah, he was uh, popped for possession in 2019. So, yeah, at the time it was definitely the wrong person. Um, and Daryl's been clean for about 20 years now. Yeah, Daryl's in a place where he could actually help somebody. Well, can you guess whose idea it was uh, to have Doc talk to Harvey? Who? Jeff Wilpon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? You know, uh, I was watching, I don't know if it's because I'm binging Secession. Oh, I didn't know that. How do you like yeah, it? It, it, it? The people are the most contemptible people on the face of the earth. What episode sort of year? Where are you at? Yeah, yeah. Where Middle second season. Hmm. Oh, that's a good point in the show. Yeah, the yeah, end of season one, awesome, and season two is great. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if it if it's watching that show, but to me, Matt Harvey reminds me of Kendall Roy. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, they kind of yeah, the, look. They kind of look alike too. Yeah. Bit. yeah. Had everything in the palm of his hand, could have been the great one, could have been the great, could have had greatness, but mentally had doubts and couldn't handle it. Well, demons and also like drug addiction. So, like, yep. obviously, that got in the way. Well, let's not spoil it for the listeners in case anyone didn't. But if you haven't watched the session, we highlight the Allow Me to Be a Frank. And you know, uh, it. this helps us yeah. cycle back to the Nets trade. Yeah. The Simmons for uh, Durant trade. You know, James Harden is hated by Chris Paul. He's hated by Russell Westbrook. He's hated by Kevin Durant. He's hated by Kyrie Irving. You know, at a certain point, you got to say, you know what? There's your asshole. There's your asshole. And uh, James Harden literally sabotaged in that season. Sabotaged it. When, 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 you got, when you acquired him, when you guys got him, were you ecstatic? Were you happy? Or did you always, did you foresee this happening? I was apprehensive. I didn't like the draft picks they gave up. But he played good last year. And, and the thing I don't get is he's a free agent at the end of the season. Why are you playing like this? Literally not giving a fuck about the Nets. Why not go out there, play your fucking best, try to get your biggest contract, and maybe win a championship along the way? If you win a championship and you leave, if you play your best and leave, good for him. He's a difficult personality. And, and 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 Sixer fans are saying, yeah, I'm going to love Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons has mental health issues. And you know what? Maybe playing around two players like Durant and Kyrie Irving, also having Seth Curry and other players that could take shots, LaMarcus Aldridge, is going to take a lot of pressure off his back. Because he got into a shooting slump, the fans booed, and I think it was a vicious cycle. I don't think there's enough Brooklyn fans to be hostile to him. Are I mean, you comparing? It's not, the, like he's coming, it's not like he's coming to the Knicks where Knicks fans are going to, would be brutal to him. So but I think Ben Simmons, given the right atmosphere, can turn his career around. I hope James Harden gets fatter. I hope he tears more hamstrings. And I hope that he is a lead anchor, so much so that everyone in everyone in Philadelphia feels the same way I do about him. Well, at least we know that you're approaching it like an adult, Frank. At least we know that you're looking at James Harden, you know, unequivocally unbiased with that statement. Yeah. I, I really hope him nothing but pain and misery the rest of his fucking life. 
Yeah, and this, he's done this for what, two straight years? When the next yep. Yeah. Yeah, he did it with I, the Rockets. I hope he goes and gets the clap. I'm in Philadelphia. <laughs> How about the audacity that he actually had the balls to say that Philly was his top landing destination last year? When it was all had, there, it was, get me to he, Brooklyn, get me to Brooklyn. He was traded. He didn't wasn't a free agent. He didn't have a no trade clause. He didn't have a fucking choice. He, he, I mean, seriously, you uh, the, the, you could be a professional. You know, Durant is good. Durant's gonna miss two months when it's all said and done, probably. James Harden could have stepped up, filled those shoes, and kept the Nets from uh, from drowning. They drowned because of him. What do you, what is he going to do if Embiid gets hurt? <laughs> He's grabbing the shirt. He's grabbing the shirt, everyone. <laughs> I'll be eating popcorn watching it. He'll probably be packed. I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him have a one one for 18 night in Philadelphia and then say, you know, this isn't where I want to be. I want to I want to be in Golden State. No, with the Lakers, probably. (laughs) Yeah, him and Russell Red. Well, that can't happen because Russell Westbrook hates him. Yeah, they hate each other. And uh what about – hey, wait, I also want to bring up, speaking of the Super Bowl commercials earlier in the show, what did you think about the LeBron commercial talking to his younger self? This was the exact look I had on my face watching that commercial. Yeah, I actually <laughs> muted it, I think. He's so cringy, LeBron. I mean, he is – I mean, he's just a guy you could tell. He never, like, he didn't go, like, to a college. Like, he didn't have a traditional, like, school setting. Like, he just, his he has such a lack of social awareness. Like, he doesn't know how to act in front of regular people. Plus, no one's ever been normal to him in his entire life. He's literally been a superstar for his entire life. So, when he's put around, like, normal people, he doesn't know. Like, I don't blame him for being weird as hell. Because he has had the most extraordinary. Did you life see ever. that? Uh, did you see Space Jam two yet? I no. will never. I will never see Space Jam two. I will not ruin it. <laughs> in my in my childhood. Have you it seen is, it? It is terrible. Hence why we will not be seeing. Terrible. It. it literally is like a advertisement for fucking Warner Brothers properties. And, and then, then I heard it saying, oh, he need to chill out. It's a kid's movie. <laughs> they have the droogs from A Clockwork Orange. Yeah, that's not a kid's movie. They have, you- this, they have this nun on there who's from a movie that's actually banned in some countries because of how vulgar it is. What's well, the movie? Uh, let me see. Yeah, what was the name of it? It was like a horror mm-hmm. movie. Uh, let me see if I can find the name of this. I mean, it's 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 like uh. What's your Google search? What does it say? What'd you write down? Weird nun. Oh, right here it is. Nun. Here it is. I got the story. Yeah. A nun from an X-rated movie called The Devils. Shows up. Very the fitting. The movie is The Devils. The Devils. Very fitting to you. Yeah, The Devils. Let me look this up. Devils. And it's a Warner Brothers property. 1971 movie oh. called The Devils. It has... Uh, uh, so there's like a demonic nun that's in there. And it's like... Uh, it's a horror film with uh, Vanessa Redgrave made in England. It's about the... Uh, it's a. Uh, it's about a. Uh, it's a dramatized historical account of the fall of Urban Grandi, a, 19, a 17th century Roman Catholic priest who was accused of witchcraft in uh, France. It focuses on Sister Jean, 
a sexually repressed nun who incites the atro- the accusations. Um, yeah, this is a kids' movie, and they have that nun <laughs> in the crowd watching the basketball game, <laughs> sitting next to the droogs from the Clockwork Orange. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is actually banned in uh, several countries. <laughs> well, you oh should God. have you should have uh, Jeff Dilo review it. You should get it to Lights Camera Barcelona. Maybe you could sit down with them and do the Devils. They I'm got a uh, this nun with got them. X, it's got an X-rated. The film is not even. The film is you know is 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 like you have to like find a hard. It, it's hard to find because of just how. Just like censored it is, and just like how we should do a live stream of it. We should do like yeah, a dedicated it was originally a hundred eleven minutes, and that uh, well, here we go, here we go. When it got went to America, three minutes got cut because they were literally censored because it depicts the rape of Jesus Christ. Okay, we're gonna- my God. All right, oh, yeah. Space Jam 2 was not a kid's movie, confirmed. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, I'm looking at the wiki page. Despite the limited release and explicit content of the film, a nun wearing the habit seen in the movie was, had a cameo in a Space Jam's new legacy. <laughs> I mean, anything Warner Brothers, they just were in it somehow. They had like a cartoon of Superman and a cartoon of Batman and well Stephen King's it too. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they Pennywise is in the crowd. Yeah. So but it was just a bad movie. And it was a, a two hour commercial for Warner Brothers properties. It was bad. Um, and LeBron James LeBron James came off as an asshole to his son. The son, he has, he has two sons. He has one son that's supposed to be a good basketball player, and his younger son doesn't really like basketball, wants to be a computer engineer, a computer designer. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't want to go to basketball camp. He wants to go to computer class. And LeBron says, no, you have to go to basketball camp. I mean, I actually cannot picture LeBron really being like that. No. Even as much as I hate him. Um, speaking of, I guess, I really don't even have a segue into this, but I think it's time maybe for a little, let's, let's move away from LeBron and, and the nun and all that jazz. Uh, we have asked the tank for this week, um, Frank and side retired pod wants to know if David Wright doesn't go to all timers day, who will be announced last in the players' oh. introductions as a ceremony, as sort of the capstone player, just like the Yankees oh, used to well, do with it, Barry Mantle. Will not be there. David Wright will be there. I can't imagine him not being there. Hypothetically, but, if he wasn't, who would be next in line? If, even if he was there, he wouldn't be the last player announced. So who would be last? It would be Mike Piazza. Why is that? Number retired, Hall of Famer. Where where does Piazza rank in all time Mets for you? Top five, top five, easily. Yeah. He's and by the way, he's yeah. easily in the top five because I I would say he's yeah. easily top three. You know, what used to be funny. Obviously, is, you know, what used to be funny is uh, you guys are probably too young to remember this. Obviously, Pat is, but uh, Derek Jeter is now the last one introduced now, or someone from that team. Or more recently, was Whitey Ford or someone from the old days? In the 80s and 90s, Joe DiMaggio had it in his contract. He had to be the last player announced after Mickey Mantle. Uh, I mean, I didn't know that. He ref- he said he would. If, it, if they announced Mantle last, he wouldn't go. Oh, my God. DiMaggio had issues when it came to Mickey Mantle. Yeah, because uh, uh, Mantle was a successor. And Joe DiMaggio was insanely jealous of Mickey Mantle. I think because Mickey Mantle partied hard, harder than him. Uh, yeah, his, uh, that was George. part of it. And at, uh, at baseball card shows, Mantle, more fans wanted Mantle's autograph. And Mantle was more in, in demand. And 
the manager actually like got, and it was even his autobiographer who was like one of his personal god people who was always around him and after his death wrote like like kind of like a tell-all book about Joe DiMaggio that he was like a bitter man. There's like, how do they, how come they like him? Look what he lived. Like, I lived a clean life. How do they like him? And he just doesn't understand that Joe DiMaggio's fans grew up and went to war. He did they lived a different life. Mickey Mantle's fans were the children of the DiMaggio fans. They grew up with TV. They grew up in suburban, cushioned, cushier surroundings. The Maggio fans grew up in the Great Depression. TV, the uh, TV and the baby boom generation carried Mickey Mantle. And then baseball card market heated up during Mantle's tenure. The Maggio didn't have that. And that's why Mantle has a popularity. The Maggio actually just was like, they, they, they like him because he's blonde and blue-eyed. Yeah. And he was Adam. insanely – Mickey Man, Joe DiMaggio was insanely jealous of Mickey Mantle. Which, by the way, did you know uh, Pete Rose and Joe DiMaggio uh, served together in Vietnam? DiMaggio and Rose? Yeah, and, and he said – he told Mike Francesa that he was a penis with a man hanging from it. You never heard that? No. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, um, speaking, goes, but speaking of penises, well, this is actually <laughs> not not a penis reference at all because I thought it was a foot foot uh, a hot dog question, but it's not. It's a hamburger question. Well, uh, Dykstra always makes comments about the uh, Dow strawberries. Uh. Swango? Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, the soul poll. But right here, it's right here, his interview. Uh, this isn't with Francesa, but he went on a different show and he talked about uh, Joe DiMaggio's penis. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, perfect segue to uh, Trues wants to know, True Truselos wants to know, hey, Frank, I'm going to Jacksonville for UFC in April. Do you know of any burger suggestions out there or would Doug's know? It's better to ask Doug's. Better to ask Doug's. Have you you've had a burger though in Jacksonville? I assume if you've been there. Not really. Oh, all right. So, Trues, please direct your question to at Coach Doug's on what, Twitter. What do they eat in Jacksonville? Like, what's what are they big on there? Alligator. Oh, they like barbecue places. Barbecue places. Alligator too. I think so. Right. Uh, I haven't had Have alligator. You, you haven't. Oh, dude, it's so good, Frank. Even you would like it. You probably wouldn't eat it unless you didn't know it was alligator. Like, you would have to well, be told it's something else. I eat once eaten caribou. What is caribou? You? It's like a giant, giant moose. And it was good? Did you know it was caribou? Nope. But it wasn't too bad. I eat, I eat bison. I, I, I like bison. Bison's yeah. good. It's still a little gamey, but good. it's really good. Yeah. Um. And that's pretty much it for this week for Ask the Tank. Um, I think this was a good one. Before we wrap things up, uh, Frank, you feel how are you feeling about the uh, meeting tomorrow between MLB and uh, the Players Union? Nothing's going to come of it. When do you think the season's starting? Not before June 1st. Oof. You think it's going to be similar to the uh, COVID shortened season? I think there's not going to be a season. This reminds me of 24... 2004-2005 NHL season where Bettman had ulterior motives to break the union, and he did. Uh, Roger, Rob Manford has ulterior motives to just restructure and change baseball. He's going to get rid of the American and National League. Yeah, I saw you had an exchange with Howie Rose about that, too, and he said, geez, he, he goes, and I, and I thought I was Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> he's never met me yeah i know he needs to his daughter knows how negative you are but he doesn't yes. i guess um and yeah that's uh people are so disinterested in baseball right now they need to pick it up and and get something done soon because it's we've gotten to the point where everybody's tuned out and spring training is supposed to start this week so as Frank closed out the show with a big fucking snot rocket right into his shirt, 
Yeah, um, that's what he thinks about Rob Manfraud. <laughs> but uh, make sure to follow us um, at, at Frank the Tank Thought on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram is literally, we are less than a thousand away from 10,000 um, followers. Um, you got Pat at the at Regaza Report. You got Frank at NJ Tank 99. I am at Nick Bueno. Um, so please follow us there and make sure to rate, review, download, and subscribe. Should I go out with a song? Yeah, go ahead. Take us, us away. All right. On the road again. Gee, I can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is going and seeing new places. And I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things I never see again. I don't think I fucked it up, but on the road again, like a band of gypsies going down the highway, it's my way. Click like and subscribe, and you'll never know where I'm going to be next week. I'm going to see the Daytona to give her a full report, because I can't wait to get on the road again. Click like, subscribe, see you next week, and uh, use promo code FRANK to get 10% off at Feltman's.us, and See you next week.